Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody, how are you? It's Alex Bennett, and this is, of course, The Ramble, and The Ramble goes on from now until the midnight on the east coast of the United States of America. Uh, adapt it to your own area and find out what time it is where you are, if, if, if it is... Uh, th- that time here on the East Coast, then we're live. And you can, could I do that if we weren't live? No, I couldn't. Anyway, uh, hi, how are you? I, uh, I don't have a guest. And I don't have much to talk about. Wait a minute, I had, oh, here it is. Yeah, there they are. Okay, I have some, some items that I've put in the bin for the last couple of days. Uh, I don't have much to talk about, so I don't know. I always say this. I will go to the phones early, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, I always say that, and then I never go to the phones early. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, interesting interesting thing I, I attempted to get for this program. Uh, I, I On my Facebook page, um, we had a uh, item that was put up uh, by uh, a guy who was over at the uh, over at the uh, Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame, and uh, his name, of course, is uh, 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 David Farrell Jackson. And uh, we're going to be interviewing him next week at some point because I want to talk about the Bay Area Radio or archives and also just about the history of radio in general. And he's been sending me stuff that, uh, uh, quite frankly, is bringing back a lot of memories, all right? Uh, and uh, so I want to talk to him, but he put up that picture of Ted Randall. And let me explain Ted Randall for a second. When I was a kid, when I was, God, I think it was when I was, when I was like 15 years old, all of a sudden, out of a clear blue sky, this radio station appeared called KOBY, Kobe. And uh, why they call it Kobe, I don't, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, it had a lot of disc jockeys on it, and they played top 40. There were, there were just 40 songs in rotation and like a couple of new hits, okay, that were uh, not yet in the, in the top 40. And uh, then they had their pick of the week. That was the big one, the pick of the week. That thing always would wind up in the, in the top 40. Now, this had never been done on radio before, uh, playing the same 40 songs over and over again. Let me tell you how this uh, all started. It wasn't started by KOBY in, uh, in San Francisco. It was started by um, uh, two people, a guy I later went to work for by the name of Gordon McClendon and another guy named Todd Storrs. Uh, and uh, they had radio stations, or their family had radio stations, and they'd been in the service together, and they had mustered out of the service, and they were sitting in a, at least as legend goes, they were sitting in a, uh, uh, a cafe somewhere. And as they were sitting there talking about various things and what they were going to do with their radio stations and what could they do that was different and whatever, this waitress kept going over to the jukebox and play and put in like in those days you put in a quarter you got five songs you could play for a quarter right and she put in a quarter maybe she put in two quarters and she kept playing the same five songs over and over and over again and they were sitting there watching this and going I wonder why she plays the same four, five songs over and over again and they they assumed it was because she liked these five songs and then they started talking about it, and they started brainstorming, and one thing came to another, and they said, what if we took a radio station and kept playing a very limited playlist over and over and over again? Do you think that could be a hit? And they went, well, our stations aren't doing much of anything now. It never hurts to try. So they came up with this concept. 
after watching this waitress in this restaurant, this is the legend of the history of this, and I, and I had it uh, corroborated years later when I worked for Gordon McClendon, uh, that they invented Top 40. They came up with the idea that you take 40 songs and you just play them in rotation over and over and over again. Uh, the, uh, the top uh, 20, you play more than you play the bottom 20. And they had a rotation kind of situation. And then they had the uh, 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 p potential hits of the future, and then they had their pick of the week. And there were about maybe tops 50 songs they played on the station over and over and over again. Now, anybody you would tell this to in, that, in those days would go, what the fuck are you, what, what, are you, what are you smoking? I mean, what, how crazy are you that you want to take this and you want to repeat these songs over and over and over again? And they just thought it sounded like a good idea. So they started these top 40 radio stations. Stores did it on one of his stations. McClendon did it on one of his. I think it was uh, K, uh, uh, KLIF in, uh, in Dallas. Yeah, he had Cliff in Dallas and Kilt in, uh, in Houston, where I worked at one time. And uh, they started playing the records over and over and over again. And these stations became a monstrous hit. I mean, they were the top 40 to begin with was not, you know, you'd think the top 40 was like, was it rock and roll? And the answer was no. It was the top 40 records. So you could have on the, on the, on the top 40 list uh, Bill Haley and the Comets and Fats Domino and Frank Sinatra. And, uh, uh, you know, Nelson Riddle or something like that. In other words, it was the top 40 selling records. It didn't matter what they were. In fact, in Houston, Texas, many times uh, the top 40 was dominated by country hits. But anyway, they, they came up with this concept of top 40, and it became a sensation for Todd Storrs and Gordon McClendon. But it had not hit San Francisco yet because they didn't own any stations in San Francisco. And so they, uh, uh, so this group of people, I don't know who the company was that uh, did this. I can't, I, that's why I'd like to interview Ted Randall. Um, because it, they, these people came in and they started doing this format. Now, I don't know who owned the radio station at the time. I would have to go look it up and do a little bit of research or something like that to find out exactly who owned the station and who, who had the idea of bringing that into San Francisco. But when I was a kid, all of a sudden I heard about this station, they were gonna play the same 40 records over and over and over again. Now, I loved radio, okay? And that seemed like a really stupid idea to me as a kid. But then I listened to it and I got to love it and I got addicted to it. And every kid in my high school was listening to KOBY. And one of the guys on this station was Ted Randall. Uh, and uh, I don't think he was the program director. I think he was just one of the jocks, but I'm, I, I, I can't be exactly sure about that. Uh, and uh, so uh, 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 Ted Randall wound up being a part of my life because while, when I was trying to get into the business as a whole and trying to really move into the business, I took a meeting at one point with Ted Randall, and we talked about, you know, the business and, and how I could do better in it and go further in it. And um, uh, he, uh, he suggested to me that he, I think he was the one that suggested that I go to KLAD in Klamath Falls, Oregon, that he knew there was an opening there and that I might be perfect for that and be a good place for me to go. And uh, so I went there. And while I was there, he hired me to do imaging for his radio stations. In other words, I would make these little things that go, you're listening to the top hits on blah, 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 and you know, with some stinger music and things like that. And then they would send, he would send it out to all the stations because he was a program consultant by that time. And so in a way, he was a big influence on me. I mean, he, he gave me a shove in the right direction. Uh, uh, I remember having a talk with him one day. Uh, and something that, that lasted with me a long time, we were talking about music, and I said, well, you know, why don't we play this music or that music, because all my friends like that music. And he said, yeah, your friends may like it, and everybody you know may like it, but that doesn't mean everybody likes it. 
because you hang out with people of similar interests to you and you're not a stupid guy so you probably hang around with other people who are really intelligent but the average person is different and you have to listen to what the average person wants you can't say oh you can't play to your group and i i took that advice uh, didn't use it all the time but it was really good advice and uh, so I, I knew Ted Randall kind of peripherally in my life, but he was very important to my career propulsion, as it were. Um, so now he puts this picture up because I, in my, um, in my uh, life in the passing lane, I mentioned Ted Randall and um, uh, David Farrell um, uh, puts it up there. David Farrell Jackson puts it up there. And then I said, I, I looked him up and I think he's still alive. And then um, I think uh, David wrote, yes, he is. And then all of a sudden, there's a word from Ted Randall in which he says, um, uh, uh, he, he is Alex, that was David Farrell. And then, oh, then he says, thought you might like to know that I'm still alive and doing well, slowing down, but still quite active. And I was just taken back by that because to begin with, I think he had to be at least 10 years older than me. He may have been a little older than that. He could be in his 90s now. And uh, when I find somebody that I knew that is in his 90s or approaching his 90s and is still alive, I consider that a good day, okay? And so... Uh, um, I, uh, I wrote him back and I told him, I said, you were a big influence on me. And I said, I was using the name Jerry Bennett at the time. And uh, we, uh, uh, that was, that was it, you know. Uh, I used, an, you know, and, and I wrote him and he wrote back and he said, well, thank you very much. And then I wrote him and I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to interview him because I would love to talk about those days when he was really in on the ground floor of top 40 and about how it, it all came to be. And I wrote him and I said, I'd love to do an interview with you, I do this, this program. And he wrote back and he said, well, you know, thank you very much. He said, but I haven't done radio in 27 years and I'm not about ready, I guess not about ready to start now. And uh, thanks for the invitation though. And I wrote him back and I said, well, you know, no harm, no foul. I, I, I just wanted you to know that you had a great influence on my life. But I'm kind of depressed because I really, I, there's so many questions I want to ask this guy. And it's not like he was a huge guy in the radio business. He was one of the early people who called himself a consultant. Uh, a guy, that was a guy who would, uh, in those days, consult a radio station on how to do a format, would supply them with the records, would supply them with the imaging for the station, and then the station just, uh, you know, did his playlist and everything. And he, he would supply you with the records, too. He would make sure that you got all the records you needed for your, for your library at that time. So that was, uh, let me just uh, go back to another page here that I got to go to. There we are. Um, so that was, uh, uh, um, so I would have liked to have interviewed him. I, th I think that would have been a lot of fun. I think you would have found it interesting too but uh, to find out this guy is still alive you know makes me feel better i'm also feeling better today because i uh, i uh, went over to um, the hospital and saw jack my friend jack garfine who was kind of touch and go a couple of nights ago i mean his his lady friend uh, natalia uh was just uh you know, beside herself. We have never seen her like that. She was really worried she was going to lose him. Uh, he had had uh, some kind of heart problem uh, compounded with pneumonia and fluid around the heart and everything, and they put him in the hospital and they pumped him full of stuff and everything and sucked other stuff out of him. And uh, I went over to see him today, and he was fine. He was getting better. And they said that he's going to be out of intensive care and they're going to put him in a regular hospital room. So uh, I feel better about that today because I've been feeling depressed for the last couple of days about it. I keep saying to myself, why did I go get myself a really old friend that I like? You know, why, 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 did, why did I do that? You know, and then when if he goes today, I will not have gotten many good years out of him, you know, so. But anyway, he's, he's better, and for those people who know him from this program, 
uh, he's doing uh, much better. Um, so anyway, you know, I uh, I was thinking about about I would really maybe I'd like to start interviewing some radio people about the history their history in radio, and and what it entailed. Uh, but I don't know where to start. Uh, and I but I'm I think I'm going to start trying to do some interviews with people in the radio who aren't in the radio business but were in the radio business and were um, uh, pretty much uh, um, uh, <laughs> pretty much there. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm I'm trying to what? There we go. Okay, no recent conversation. I I was just trying to get my Skype ready here, and I, I it looks strange to me. But then again, everything looks strange to me these days. I don't. I, I, there's something. There's something weird. Uh, I'm not. The, I'm. I'm, kind of. I forget stuff, you know, and that's getting to bother me. Um, I'm going. You know, will every day a little bit of my life disappear from me? You know, it's it's like I used to remember every password I had and what it was, and now I don't. But you know, it could be because every time somebody, you know, decides that your password has been violated or you, it's time for you to change your password, you have to change it, and you change it so many times. You know, if you start out and your first password ever is the word Bob, all right. By now, it's Bob 2000 asterisk colon, you know, because every time they say, don't use the one that you'll use, use last time. Oh, and you can't use that one because you, you can't use something you used within the last year. And so all of a sudden, I'm, I'm having to make lists of all these passwords. And it used to be I didn't I have one password I used one password. I don't care if you steal my stuff from me. I used one password. And I enjoyed using 1Password because whenever I went somewhere, I knew that no matter what the name was on the account, the password was that, that word. And uh, all of a sudden, it's like, can't use that. You have, to, we have, you have to have a new one. Or you forgot the old one or you try signed in too many times and whatever. And so then you, you put an asterisk after it, right? And then uh, you go to another. Finally, you've got so many fucking passwords that you don't know what to do. So uh, I'm I'm up to my ass in passwords. And I've got uh, uh, my notes program in on the Mac that has all my passwords. And if that ever goes bad, uh, I will have lost them all. Although I'm thinking in the next couple of days of starting a just a list of. A, cutting and pasting off those notes, the main ones, so that I, I have them, okay? But anyway, it's, it's a pain in the ass. So anyway, so I, uh, 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 I was telling you last night that I, I would go, Daddy. I had to go to this whole, through this whole thing where they went, uh, oh, you have to be, now we have to send you over to hosting. And then hosting says, I have to go over to my number twos. And whatever. And they had to just fix a problem. Well, today I get a thing and it says they fixed my problem. So I went online and I logged in. And then I went to my, uh, my uh, web stuff on there. And then I went, to, I wanted to see the statistics. That's where I couldn't get this thing to work. And it says name. And I put my name in. It says password. I put the password in there. It doesn't work. <laughs> so now I've got to call them again. And I'm on the line again for another half hour with them. And finally, we got it all resolved. But Jesus, it's all over passwords. You know, here's the deal. Let's say Apple. I want to use any password that I want to. And I don't care if it's the one I used last year or last week or five minutes ago. I want to use that password. What should that be to you? Why is it so important that I change my password? Oh, and by the way, I can't use the one I used within the last year. So every time I change it, I have to add something to it. And they suggest you do it every month. And it should be a bunch of random numbers and stuff like that. I want it simple, okay? Uh, I just don't... Um, uh, uh, I just don't understand it. 
Oh, by the way, somebody wrote, Dave Belletti wrote, after leaving KOBY, Ted went to KEWB. You're right. Ted Randall did go to KEWB. KEWB was the top 40 station that took over for, uh, took over the hearts and minds and hearts of the, uh, it was a Kroll Collier station, Kroll Collier being a publishing company. And they had KFWB in Los Angeles, which originally started stood for Warner Brothers, and then they started KEWB in San Francisco. And when they went on with KEWB, they had Gary Owens, who went on to Laugh-In, who was one of the people on there. And uh, who, was the, who was that talk show host, that British talk show host down in L.A.? Uh, he was a jock on that station. And you're right, Ted Randall was one of them as well. It says he did uh, 9 a.m. to 12 noon and started a, a segment called uh, the KEW Nick. Expresso House. This was in the late summer of 1959. Right. A KEWB came in and KOBY was a has been because they came in, they did it better. They had better, they had, to begin with, they had a great jingles. They were done by a group in uh, Dallas called PAMS. And they were famous for doing the best jingles in the business and they paid a fortune to get this great jingle package. And, um, uh, yeah, but uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. I'm glad you remembered that, uh, David. Uh, Ted Randall went over to uh, KEWB. And KEWB, I don't know what happened to KEWB. After a while, you know, after a couple of years, most of these stations lose their popularity and give way to something else, you know. Somebody else has a better idea of how to do the Top 40 format. And there was a guy that came in by the name of Bill Drake, uh, from, they had a company called Drake Chenault, and they were the, uh, you know, the uh, um, people who set up uh, programming on certain stations, and they even made things ter more terse, where, where still KEWB had disc jockeys who told jokes and did skits and things like that. With the Drake format, they just read from liner cards, and that was it. It was all very sparse and very tight. And... Um, I never liked the Drake Chenault format, but uh, but it was very popular, very popular. Thank you, uh, David Belechi, for for reminding me of that. Um, so anyway, anyway, um, so here we go. Anyway, uh, let's see here. What is this news flash? Alive and uh, kicking. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. That uh, that. W w it, it, it turns out, well, he, well, I'll let I'll let Phil tell the story. Wait a minute, let me open up the lines here. I'll let Phil tell the story because, uh, um, you know, uh, I I, uh, uh, I just got a, a note here from Mike Allen. And you know the story about Mike Allen. We've been wondering where the fuck he's been for the last two months. And we thought, gee, you know, in, in, in lieu of, of knowing anything else, uh, maybe he's dead, and it turns out he's not dead. But let I want Phil to tell the story, so I've opened up the lines here, so that uh, Phil can uh, Phil can call now, and he can tell you the complete story. Anyway, uh, so that's a little story about uh, Top Forty Radio, which uh, Top Forty then went the way of all flesh because then progressive radio came in and they played uh, like rock and roll exclusively and then other people would play they had good music stations gordon mcclennan who started top 40 had a the first good music station of his was kbl in san francisco in the air everywhere over san francisco and he played all what my father used to call uh, 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 what do you call pancake music Flapjack music, that's what he called it. That's what my father called it. And he didn't, uh, he didn't have a great love for it. So. Uh, but that was the good music format. And, oh, look, we don't have, we don't have uh, uh, Phil first. Oh, I beat Phil. You beat Phil. Yeah, yeah. I w the reason I was waiting for Phil is because he has something to tell about M uh, Mike Allen. But if he is, doesn't call really fast, I'm just going to, I'm just going to announce it and, he can go fuck himself, you know. How you doing tonight, Charlie? I'm doing pretty good. It's cold and rainy here. Really? It uh, today it was very nice here. It was, we were up in the fifties. Oh, it's forty degrees and raining here. Oh, really? <laughs> Arizona. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
Well, anyway, so I'm I'm still waiting for Phil to call. Gee, usually Phil's right here, you know. Yeah. But then again, he heard that I was talking for a half hour, and he's probably bored with that and went somewhere else. So, uh, uh, well, then I'll say what's happening. Uh, Mike Allen is alive. Uh, but I but Phil actually talked to him today, and uh, that's why I wanted Phil to talk about it. Now, I'm mad at Mike Allen. Fuck you, Mike, if you're listening. I want to say fuck you, okay? Because uh, while I don't really want you on this program, uh, I, do, uh, I do worry about people who are associated with our programs and our regulars. When they suddenly disappear, I worry about them. Like I worried about uh, Renee. So I wrote Renee a note, and she said, I've just been you know, hiding. I haven't been... You know, this time of the year, I get a little low and things like that. And, you know, so I, okay, fine. But I know that she's okay, and she replies to me. But Mike Allen just disappeared off the face of the fucking earth. You know? And, um, so, huh? Uh, Mike Allen is on the uh, side there on the chat saying he's there. Yeah, yep, alive yep I know, I know. But it was Phil who he called today and talked to. And that's why I was hoping Phil would call. But where's Phil? Maybe yeah, Phil's well, dead. It looks like he's still talking to him is what it looks like. Oh, really? Why? Where? It says, yes, call Phil on the phone and Phil talking to him and I'm back. Or maybe uh, maybe he's not. There's just some talk on there about. He, well, he talked to Phil today. Phil, yeah, Phil, Phil sent me a... Uh, a thing uh, saying that he had talked to him today, so that's why I was oh, waiting okay. for Phil yeah, to come on and talk that, about so. it, you know, and and and, and let us know how he uh, how he is and all that. But I no, guess that's good. I guess well, Phil, he'll show up sooner or later. You know, Phil. Yeah, right. He want he wants to play hard to get. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, here here where here comes Rob Alfano. Well, that, that's hardly Phil, but you know, it's it's Rob. And the, hello, Rob. Hello. How you doing? Oh, look, Hi, he, he's in his he's in his uh, uh, breakfast nook. I'm in the kitchen. The breakfast nook's behind me. Oh, the, I'm just cooking. What, how do you decide where the breakfast nook is? I guess that's where the table is, right? Well, you decide where it is because it's they call it a morning room. So I mean, that's oh, they the call it a go mor morning room. It's called the morning room. Yeah, they have those in funeral parlors. But that's another story altogether. <laughs> a little different than spelling. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I was, uh, did you hear me talking about Top 40 Radio? I did not. No, I yeah. just tuned in. I heard you talking about Mike Allen. Yeah. Well, I, know, I was talking about uh, Top 40 Radio and, you know, how, how it started in, when I first heard it in San Francisco when I was a kid. And it was like a sensation. You know, it just took over the business. Uh, and then I explained how it came to be because a boss of mine, old boss of mine, had created it along with another guy, Todd Stores and Gordon McClendon. And uh, so I was just told that whole story. So I thought you. Oh, I missed you, it. I'll it, have to listen to the replay. Yeah, listen to the replay. I think you find it interesting. I think you will find it interesting. Uh, hi, Mike. Hope you're feeling better. Oh, that's you, Kevin. Typing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear he's okay, but I'm pissed off at him because why for a month and um, almost two months couldn't he get a hold yeah. of anybody? Was he being held prisoner? <laughs> you know, maybe he's on those good drugs. So I, I'm there are two people I'm mad at now. He and that Jussie guy. You know. Oh, that idiot. Yeah, I'm mad at Jussie too. <laughs> yeah, boy, he he made it bad for everybody. You know. He he it, he made it bad for gay people. He made it bad for uh, 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 black people, and most of all, he made it bad for black and gay people. So, you know, uh, it's uh, but uh, he, as we all know, Jussie. What's his last name again? Smollett. Smollett. Just yeah. uh, Jussie. What kind of name is Jussie? They couldn't Maybe spell Jesse. Justin or something? I don't know. You know, that could be. Could be his name is Justin, and he uses the name Jesse. But anyway, uh, he's in a lot of trouble. You know, he's in a lot of trouble, not so much that he's going to go to jail. I think they'll probably give him, um, you know, what I think he, he should get 
the maximum, whatever they can give him. They, they can give him up to three years, but usually because he's never had any other crimes he's been accused of or whatever, uh, they would, might give him just, you know, probation. Um, but uh, he certainly, well, if he did this, let, let's say, let, first of all, let's give the presumption of innocence here, okay? But barring that, we all know he did it. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he really caused a, a great amount of problems for the police department in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Chicago. Uh, a lot of uh, resources were being routed over to that situation, which sucks. You know, it's a horrible, horrible thing. And uh, uh, I really, I agree with you. You know, I think that he should get some kind of penalty uh, that is more than just a slap on the wrist. But anyway, um, but he was, he was arraigned today. And he went out, they got they, this lawyer, what's his name? Uh, Gar, uh, 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 starts with a G. Uh, he, he's a big lawyer. And he's always brought in for these kind of things. He's going to be handling the case. And, you know, he'll throw enough doubt into the minds of certain people that maybe the penalty won't be as bad as it should be. But, you know, I'm pissed at him. And that's also why I'm pissed at Mike. It's the same thing. He disappeared. And he, you know, he didn't get a hold of anybody. He didn't get a hold of, of, of certainly he doesn't have to get a hold of me, but he certainly, uh, you know, uh, Jack Bishop was really worried about him. And um, when you know the people are going to worry about you, you usually let them know where you are, you know? So anyway, so I'm... Oh, here, I see Phil's coming online now. I think he's deigned to be part of our program. Um, he told me he would be on tonight. He told you? Yeah, we were communicating earlier today. Yeah, about what? He's uh, he's gonna do some custom ear molds for me. Oh, okay, all right, good. Uh, here here comes Phil. Uh, hello, Phil. Why is that still going like that? I I I brought you on. I see you, sir. Yeah, I know. I brought him on, but I don't know why. Uh, I, I, who knows? This Skype is running weird lately. Yeah. Anyway, what's the word, Phil? Uh, uh, you, you mean uh, about Mike Allen? Yeah, tell him now yeah. what happened with you and Mike Allen. I was I was stalling here because I was waiting for you to call to tell the story, but slowly everybody else has been telling the story. Oh well, I got a phone call tonight. Yeah. Uh, you know the cops left. Uh, turn up your my turn phone up your, turn up your mic a little bit. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Uh, the cops left my phone number. Is that better? Yeah, it's better. All right. Uh, on uh, his door. And I guess, uh, so he called me and he said, uh, oh, yeah, I was in rehab. And uh, his uh, he's got diabetes. And uh, he said that he had uh, an issue with his foot. And I asked him, did they amputate it? And he said, no. Uh, but, you know, what happens with diabetics, especially if it's out of control, mm -hmm. is you get ulcers on your on your foot, yeah. and eventually it, you get gangrene, and they have to remove it. Mm -hmm. So he's uh, most well, likely... uh, 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 look who you're talking to. Yeah, right. Charlie yeah. Wallace went through yeah. exactly I've that. I've had six toes amputated. Yeah, uh, you know Mike should talk to you, but it's probably too late. Uh, but did you, you have diabetes, Charlie? Yeah. You know, he just had his toes cut off for the fun of it. It was, well, a, it, it was, a, it was, was a, involved a, with the mafia. It, no, it was, no, it was a, it was a, uh, um, it was a hostile version of a pedicure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, do you get, do you get like a bottle of Vicodin when they cut off a toe or do they just tell you to take ibuprofen? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, because I, I I had the neuropathy, so I couldn't feel pain in my toes anyway. So, well, the last I, four I, toes, I, I, I didn't even that, use I left that part out, but yeah, know, so. yeah, they pull off my toenails, and I don't even feel it. Oh. Yeah. Well, I have neuro. It's funny. I have neuropathy, and yet I can feel stuff. 
my my neurologist has has checked it out and said no you're you're feeling stuff there you know but you've got neuropathy so yeah. they're well, very yeah, there's uh, stages of it the various forms are the only ones that feel anything well yeah. they, there's <laughs> diabetic neuropathy that's different yeah. from what i've got because i don't have diabetes so you know it's 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 just neuropathy because i'm getting older yeah um well, uh, well neuropathy is curious. neuropathy, though, because mine's uh, supposedly antibiotic toxicity neuropathy. Oh, oh, oh really? So many antibiotics that. Uh, yeah, well, I got loaded with antibiotics trying to kill that infection in my legs. Is yeah. that uh, becoming wow. sep sepsis, or is is that a sepsis type of thing? Well, they're trying to kill off the MRSA. Oh, I see. Oh, wow! Wow. wow. Hey, no MRSA. Yeah, I uh, yeah the, the 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 conservatives have no mercer. Right, I have one little itching. No one that itching either. sore on my on my on my foot, but uh, it's very small and it's not that. Uh, but no, what what happened is uh, he I don't have diabetes and he thinks the neuropathy is being caused by a crushed uh, sp spinal cord. Oh yeah. yeah, you know that can cause neuropathy too. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, because you uh, you have uh, what is that uh, nerve? Uh, Sci sciatica. Or whatever. Sciatic nerve. Well, right? I don't know that. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it could be the sciatic nerve, but it, it basically it's that there's a pinched nerve in my back, and that's making things numb in my feet. So he gives me gabapentin, and that only makes the bottom of my feet hurt more. I don't understand why, but you know. So yeah. anyway, I had to take that for a while. Really? Did it work? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for a while until I lost all feeling altogether in my feet. Then I then he took me off. Yeah, but you tested positive for diabetes though, so they yeah, 15 they knew years ago. they knew that what it, that's what it was. I don't have. I asked my doctor. I said, "Do I have diabetes?" And he looked and he said, "Nah." He said, "Not even." So Charlie, close. did your diabetes get out of control? Why? Uh, why did it's you never have... been out of control? I've, really? I've, once they 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 diagnosed me, I was very religious about my blood sugar. And and it wasn't until I had already been diabetic for 10, 11 years before it, I, my toes started going bad. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so it's a lack of circulation, uh, and the furthest away from the heart, I guess, is the foot. And uh, that's that's why, you know, you get neuropathy. and Yeah, know, but I got those diabetic. ulcers, and they got infected, and they had to either cut my toe off or they didn't had to cut my whole leg off. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, and do, do people see these ulcers right away or is this something that you kind of discover after it gets too bad? Well, I saw mine right away. What do they look like? Were they big? It, they just look like, uh, I don't, what was that? Hole in the skin, right? Uh, yeah, it and, looks and like and a sore, of... like a blister that burst. Oh, okay. That's not what I have. I have this thing that, I have this thing, that, I have this thing that itches and it's like a little, very tiny, almost the size of a head of a pin. Yeah, but well, my that's how it one, starts, right? No, no, shut up. <laughs> but well, my first one, um, I, I saw the blister right away. It burst the next day, got infected two days later, and within six days after the first time I saw it, they were cutting my toe off. Wow. So wow. it just happened like that, that fast. Wow. It went right into the bone, and they said, if we don't cut it off now, it's going to go up your leg and it get to your heart, and it can kill you. Well, this was down around your toes, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mine's up around my ankle. So, Anyway, where where are where are we? Oh, yeah, so anyway, so you talked to him today, and did yeah, he say I, why he didn't call anybody? Uh, he grumbled. Uh, I don't, I'm not so sure he's that coherent at the, at the moment. He never Even was. Uh, yeah, well, he's worse now. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Tony also wrote me, uh, I guess Mike had written Tony uh, on uh, Facebook Messenger and uh, uh, about two hours before he called me. And uh, at that point, uh, he was, uh, you know, Tony let me know that uh, uh, he had gotten a hold of him. But I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't see that until after I talked to uh, Mike. So I asked him, I said, you know, I said, we've already, I said, Alex already did a eulogy for you. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, uh, you know, we think you're dead. And uh, he says, nah, I was in a rehab. 
and uh, I was fighting with the people there. <laughs> and he says that um, uh, somebody yelled at him for uh, moving his their wheelchair or something. And uh, it, it's I don't think he's a veteran. I don't think he was in like a veteran's home or something, but it didn't sound like he was in a, a very pleasant place. And so I said, well, why didn't you call anybody? And he grumbled. And I said, we were concerned. Uh, and I, I told him what lengths that we went through to uh, to check on him. And, uh, you know, it was he, like, he didn't appreciate that. I'm not sure that he is in a coherent enough state right now to appreciate it or not. Well, he must you know? not be listening to us now. He on medication. He must yeah, not be I'm listening sure to on... us now because he's not writing anything. Well, yeah. he, he, he has to be on medication the way he sounded. Even Tony said to me uh, that he wrote some message. Uh, let's see what Tony, Tony said. I'll give you a Tony quote. And, uh, Wait a minute, you're going to Tony for a coherence? Yeah. He says his post was back to me was hard to read. It was all over the map. He might be on some sort of painkiller. His sentences were a mess. I think he's sick and not doing well. Well, uh, you know what? Tony, uh, have you ever read some of his posts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, if if Mike's sentences were a mess uh, compared to Tony, I mean. <laughs> yeah, but, well, I uh, just, I just, you know, I just, I think, Mike, it would have been nice had you let somebody know you were okay. That's what I told him. You know, because it, you know, uh, you, you're on a show every night, every single night, and all of a sudden one night you're not there any longer and you don't call for two months. Right. Most of the time, that's an indication that somebody's dead. Right. You know? And uh, yeah, so he just he just didn't understand that that that's a sort of something you do out of courtesy. You know, uh, I said, what did they do? They, I, I said, I called your cell number and I said it, it was it was all. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I, you know, I don't know what happened to him and I'm, I'm not quite sure. I do know that he's alive and kicking. So maybe he's looking around to see if everybody's uh, all his relatives sold his stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, you know, that's that's that. Hey, listen, well, Phil. Yeah, I got something for you here. Oh, by the way, here here is the. Uh, I I, uh, I I I this was sent to me by. Uh, my 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 uh, dear friend, uh, uh, who has been putting all this stuff up, uh, David Farrell Jackson. And um, he, I, I, I saw cats like that. He put this up. He, he sent he sent this to me, and I'm going to have to go to my camera. I think uh, well, I, I can for, see for it this. Well, you can see it, but uh, I want the audience to be able to see it. I don't ah. care about you guys. Oh, okay, fuck us. let me see here. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. See that? Um, yeah, yeah. If I go, A T I M. You see what it says there? Uh, Saturday at Barron's at four, place? At 4 o'clock. For 4 <laughs> okay. o'clock. Uh, 4. Let Teen me get time. Teen time, yeah. There we go. Uh, oh, and uh, at 4 o'clock, it's newspaper. Uh, I can't see. The newspaper of the, of the air. The KTIM newspaper of the air. Uh -huh. And they had all those. Teen time, and then Saturday music. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, anyway. So what was KTIM at that time only on a couple days a week? Uh, no, no, it was on it was on every day. Uh, this was for Saturday, June 11th. Uh, and uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Four, 405 Teen Time was on the KTIM newspaper. The air it was on at four. It's only five minutes. I guess that was like more like a circular of the air. Uh, well, you know. Not that much happens in Marin. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, oh yeah, we have things like uh, Saturday at Barron's Place, Commuters News, uh, Marin Sports Page, uh, Saturday at Barron's Place, more of that, Polka Time, Ooh. Polka Time, polka, polka. the newspaper of the air. Radio station that it does polka. Huh? I, I, who hasn't worked at a radio station that had a polka show? <laughs> but, but not... A polka show that you were really committed to like this because it was on for 15 minutes. <laughs> and then at 8.45, the... They're tired. They can't polka that long. The newspaper, the air, at 9 o'clock, this is a 15-minute show that was uh, um, the Marine Construction News followed by the KTIM Polka Party for another 15 minutes. Then at... Uh, 
9.30, the Folk Dance Festival, which went for a half hour. Then the mid-morning newspaper of the air, that was 15 minutes. Then more at uh, 10.15 Saturday at Barron's Place. We were all, we, this was the way radio was done in those days. Block programming. At 12 o'clock, uh, Barron, who was, uh, uh, Ted Barron, was, uh, was it Ted, what, wait, what, was, what was the first name he used? Uh, oh, Bar Barron, oh, what was he, did he use his first, his real name was Baron Von Bukow. Uh, but, wow. uh, but, uh, yeah, then it, 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 the Marin sports page Saturday at Barron's, he was on all morning long. He was there from sign on at, uh, seven o'clock in the morning and then the KTAM newspaper of the year. And then at four Oh five teen time. And I went for a whole 55 minutes, folks. Now I used to listen to KTIM in the seventies. Yeah, think. yeah, I did too. And I, it was a great station. It was. Uh, well, it yeah. was no. By then, it was a. It, 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 they had gotten an FM signal, and they were that's, they that's were they, they, yeah. they were a progressive station at that point. Yeah. But when I was there, uh, this guy, I had to fight to get rock and roll on for fifty-five minutes a week. This is a guy so who where were they, where liked were they Love time? Lawrence Welk. What? They're in Where were they at that time? Were they at the, the low end of the AM dial or something? They were at fifteen ten, and oh, they were and they were what we it, their AM signal was a daytimer. Yeah. By yeah, a daytimer, okay. we yeah. had at this in this particular situation. Let me see here. When did, Alex what, stations what? at the top of the dial always had a better signal? Well, you know, yeah, no. Yeah. Here's 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 what happens. Uh, at at the top of the dial, you needed less power to go further. OK, right, right. so if you had 5000 watts at um, at uh, at, say, 560, yeah. you're and, and you had 5000 watts down at 1510, 1510 was a tea kettle compared to the one of at that part of the dial. Yeah, so, uh, and th that's how it worked. And then there were stations that had 50,000 watts, which were clear channel stations which meant that they couldn't have any other stations on on that frequency in the United States, or at least west of, or east of the Mississippi, because they have what was called a protected signal. That was like KGO. Yeah. So we were the opposite of that. We were a daytimer, and the reason we were a daytimer is we had to go off the air so that we wouldn't be interrupting a signal at night, because at night you had a better signal. You had a thing called uh, mm, Skywave. Skip. Skywave. Skip. Yeah. Uh, no, the skip is a different thing, but this was yeah. Skywave. And so a signal would go further. So you could, if we kept our signal going, we'd bump into somebody else's signal who was allowed to stay on all the time. So that's how yeah. they how they navigated the traffic on the airwaves. And I don't know, are there any daytimers left? Or did they yeah. phase them yeah, out? Yeah, Long Island has one. Mm -hmm. WWRL in New York used to have a, a, a hell of a signal. Uh, do, you, do you still get that? Is that still around? It was, oh, a, I, I worked, it was a I, gospel station. I, I, there was a station which was called KJBS, and then it became, I'm trying to remember the, what they changed the call letters to, but it became a religious station. But I yeah, knew, I, I was with the company that owned that station, and uh, they had, in fact, they had their transmitter was on uh, Montgomery Street, I think, or not Montgomery Street, maybe... Uh, it was a, you ever remember you were driving down the street and there'd be a big tower? Tower? The yeah. only one I remember is when you're going over the uh, San, San Mateo Bridge, there was a, a big tower. And by the way, the bottom of the yeah, the bottom of the the bottom yeah. of the tower was a battery station where they sold batteries, and then they also had their studios in there. But mm -hmm. it, but anyway, it was called KJBS, and they had they had to go off at sunset. And then they could come back on at nine o'clock, but they had to be at very limited power. It was very strange, very strange. So yeah. that's the way radio stations worked. And I, I, this I used to love Sunday nights. I used to do the Sunday night show. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while at midnight, they would do maintenance on the transmitters. Mm -hmm. And I was working at in, in central Florida at an AM 10,000 watt daytime, mm -hmm. 5,000 watt nighttime, 1060. Yeah. And, uh, they, it was fun because I didn't have to follow format after midnight. He just said, just do whatever you want to do. So for a couple of hours, I would just go on and do whatever I wanted to do. And I was doing it at daytime power after midnight. It, was, it felt so cool to do. You felt like, wow, I'm really, who knows where I'm going. Yeah, well, I, uh, do you, do, I used to go 
to the top of Mount Tamalpais at night yeah. when I was first starting the radio oh, with, business. With, and, with your radio? With my radio listen? in the car. And then I would start doing what we call DXing, going across the dial very slowly and seeing what you could pick up. And you were picking up like Denver. And, and one time I remember picking up Chicago, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because these waves would hit the clouds and then come back down. That's, That's skip, the right? skip. That's the okay. skip. Yeah. And, and you used to get DX cards at the radio station. You would send them a thing saying, I picked you up, blah, 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 yep. blah, a certain time. And they would send you a card saying, yep. congratulations, you picked they would, us up. They would say, at uh, 10.52, we heard uh, this commercial or this song. Can you verify it? Yes. And uh, they, we would send cards out to them. Now, these are yeah. it's yeah. interesting. All, I... all these stories we're telling are very good stories, but... They don't really apply today. I don't think we have that. We don't don't have this much of a situation like this anymore. Anyway. No, people. Uh, and by the way, all these daytimers the and stuff were on AM. FM didn't have the daytime situation. So yeah. uh, well, I don't know though. Like uh, when I lived in uh, the AM, still goes you know pretty far in certain cases. So like when I lived in Daytona Beach, Florida. So this is like two thousand two, two thousand and three. Mm -hmm. I could drive across like. Route 40 in Florida, like in the middle of nowhere from like Daytona toward like Ocala or something like mm -hmm. that. I mean, forest, nothing. And I, you know, because of where I lived up here, I could get 700 WLW in my car, um, like just as clear as I was driving around in Cincinnati. Right. But and I mean, this but, is a thousand miles away. But this was, that was at night, right? Yes. Yeah. Because during the day you couldn't. Sometimes. I could even uh, I could get it pretty clear. Like I could never get it in the, my apartment on a regular radio, but if you went out and like just turned your car key on and listened on your car radio, where you have a pretty you know pretty good antenna, yeah, uh, you could pick it up in the parking lot. I mean, I was this is a Daytona Beach, but WLW always advertises though they're supposed to be fifty thousand watts, so um, it's uh, supposed seven, to be one of the most powerful AM stations in the country. Do you know seventy seven WABC in New York was like that? You could pick that up all over the place 66 77 well, oh, let me let me tell you what happened up on the west coast on the west coast the most popular radio station wasn't coming out of san francisco wasn't coming out of la it was coming mexico? out of tijuana yeah. mexico huh. and that's where wolfman jack was working wolfman out of. Jack, yeah. and that's what they were doing in american graffiti was listening to this radio station, they didn't know where it was coming from, but it was coming from they. Had, and what it was because they were a Mexican radio station, the laws that they had here didn't necessarily apply, uh, and so they had hundred thousand watt radio stations. Wow. Not bad, huh? It you know, and maybe maybe I think it was one that was two hundred fifty thousand watts. I mean, it just yeah, obliterated the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, that's uh, uh, are we talking anymore with AM right now is so bad because of all the interference from everything in the air. And there's no more money in AM radio, so they don't spend very much on equipment and maintenance. You could listen to the big 50,000 watts. When I was young, you could hear like if I listen to 66 in New York, which is now the fan. Right. Mm -hmm. And if I'm out where my parents live in Quorum in Suffolk County, it's almost almost you can't hear it anymore yeah it, the quality is really bad everywhere it's all the interference from all these devices and all of this traffic yeah, yeah. Just, well seven AM is 700 wlw is pretty good because you know i live up by columbus so i mean we're talking 90 miles uh well as a matter of fact it's 105 miles from my driveway to like great american ballpark downtown cincinnati and uh, but we drive around. People in Columbus drive around, and where I live, and listen to Cincinnati 700 WLW all day. You know, because in your car it comes in great. You know, I mean, uh, when I don't have serious satellite radio on, that's that's usually what I check out, just for the like the local sports coverage. I'll tell you but something. I'll I'll, t I'll tell you something. Still, you know, for whatever anybody wants to say about AM radio, it is still the best delivery system for broadcasting that you could possibly imagine. Uh, even more, I mean, more than the internet, much more than the internet. The internet is relied, you rely on one stream for one person. So you got to be sending out thousands of streams for people to be able to pick up this signal uh, or an ultimate amount. 
I can take a radio signal, send it out, and as many people who can get that signal who want to listen to it can listen to it without any degradation, without uh, any limitation on the amount of people that can listen to it. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, you know, to this day, as a delivery system, it's still the best delivery system. When I listen to an AM station now, in comparison to either streaming or an FM station, mm -hmm. it's it's almost you you can't listen to it. I, I you know I when I was a kid, uh, our cars only had AM radios, mm -hmm. and uh, and it sounded fine. But it was like you remember when the Walkman came out, and uh, you know then everything else. Well, sounded I mean like the, shit? the the improvement on radio was FM. Yeah, uh, FM has a absolutely clean signal. In fact, the problem with it is, when I remember when I first heard FM radio, you were just astounded by the clarity of it. And as years went on, they started compressing it and doing all kinds of things. So really, the FM signal you're listening today on most stations is really shitty. It's, yeah. it's being compressed like crazy and all Loud. kinds of things. Huh? They try, to be the, like, they try to be the loudest thing on the dial. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, like PLJ, AM when stereo. you worked at PLJ... They had they, that was one of the most compressed radio stations. Yeah, WPLJ. Is that why everybody if, whispered? If you, if you stop talking, you'd hear. I mean, it was just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was just by the way, did you hear they 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 sold a WPLJ? Yeah, it's going to be religious. Yeah. It's going to be religious. <laughs> yeah, I used to, I I was one of the first jocks ever at WPLJ. Yeah. Um. Uh, Scott Shannon was there. I was there before Scott Shannon. Oh, yeah, way before, way before Scott. Scott Shannon. Alan, <laughs> you know, I had a shortwave uh, car stereo. Actually, That's Bree, by it. the way. Yes. Yeah, I, I have a shortwave car stereo because I used to listen to The Planet. Um, what are they, WBCG, I think, or something. The Planet out of Monticello, Maine. And, uh, and the other thing is it's off the ionosphere, not off clouds. And it's still popular in this part of the world. I, I pick up all India radio at night on shortwave and on AM as well. And I pick up China. And uh, you have to remember that there are a lot of people in this world that don't have Internet still. I mean, Larry Bubbles Brown was one of them. <laughs> in, in, uh, in the 60s, I had a Grundig radio. And I you still could get have shortwave on that. Yeah. yeah. I have every radio imaginable. Well, I have radios going back to the 1930s. Uh. The Some one the thing I own that's still made. in uh, still in uh, uh, storage is I have an old cathedral radio. One of those oh, tabletop wow. ca those. cathedral radios. Beautiful. Is it a tabletop or yep. a free tabletop? Standing standing tabletop. Seven G RCA. And well, that's if your uh, forest fires don't get your storage place, Alex. Well, my it, it's fine. It it, it didn't get. Uh, it. You you know the story of Passover. Well, Passover passed over his storage place. Yes. Or well, the fire passed over. Yes, it was and really very good. Did uh, you actually have uh, 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 lamb's blood put on the post of your uh, storage unit? No. So that no. Uh, they pass over? No, it's just God was on my side, I guess, if there is uh, one. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. You know. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see here. So Jussie, and there uh, is digital shortwave. China yeah. just announced that they're going digital shortwave DRM one dial. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, Chinese always besting us. Uh, so anyway, uh, so we have the Jussie Stoddard story. Stoddard, I keep forgetting what the last. Uh, Smollett. Smollett. Yeah. Jussie uh, Smollett. I, I don't watch that stupid show. Uh, I don't even know. Too many Negroes and gay guys on that show. I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't watch it. Um, it was a. It's actually. A, a, I don't know what's going to happen to him, but I'll tell you something. He sure fucked up his career. Mm -hmm. oh. oh yeah. I mean, do you think uh, he'll be an MSNBC talk show host? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think he could still play himself on Law and Order SVU. I mean, there's always <laughs> dead man walking. Oh my god. Probably at least got that left and 
past that. The guy yeah. made 65k an episode. Yeah. He had 18 episodes, I guess, in a in a season. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean he's on every episode. No, well, I think he was on 18 episodes. Yeah. 65k an episode, <clears throat> and he wanted more money. Wow. Yeah. But I don't now, understand how this was supposed to help him get it. Yeah, me either. I don't understand the correlation between I'm not happy with my salary, so let me fake getting mugged. <laughs> well, he not only fake getting mugged, here are a couple of things where he fucked up. He wanted them to have a camera view of it. But that day, yeah. that camera wasn't facing where they were doing it. Okay? That's but for about starters. Five others were. <laughs> but it, it, but it, it, more than that, what happened was when they went, the two Nigerians bought the... Uh, uh, masks and and so forth. Uh, they took a cab, and they were seen on uh, on video in the store mm. buying the, yeah. the rope yeah. and 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 then uh, they took a cab and they the police called the cab company and said, "Where'd you take them?" <laughs> and they, and they, they followed said, them all over the place. Uh, right, they, and then they then they just they they got uh, private video. They got uh, the Uber video. They yeah. got all but, kinds but of here, But here, here is, you want to hear the biggest fuck up of it all? Uh, if, you, if you're going to do mothers. this, if you're going to do this, <laughs> and you're going to hire two guys to do it with you, and you're going to offer them $3,500 to do it. Pay with a check. check. He paid with a check. <laughs> yeah. God. Did the check clear? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope, the, I hope they cashed it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's well, really the height of stupidity, let me isn't make it? Make a paper trail, huh? Yeah, but I didn't know who he was before. Now I do. True. Yeah, and about three weeks from now, you'll forget who he was. So you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now and then, what and then saying, one month from now, he'll run for president. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, actually, they actually did us a favor. Yeah. He actually did us a favor because now people are saying, you know, maybe we're running to judgment. A little too fast, and not giving people due process. And uh, no, 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 know, no, 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 no. They, like but they're, they're saying the opposite yeah. of that, Phil. This isn't due process. This wasn't a question of due process. Wait a minute. This was f for believing the story because you what? didn't want to sound like a bad person because he was gay and he was black. No, I understand. Okay, so okay, uh, so this is so this is it it's, it's, it's rushing to judgment. No, it, what, what, it, it, yeah, just like you guys do. You know, Did you hear just the like Trump does. That the police yeah, that's another one about You know, uh, uh, Trump has never, never apologized to the Central oh, Park Five. What about? You know. What about? <laughs> no, but he's never, he's never apologized to the Central Park Five, so and what? he ran rushed, rushed to judgment on that one. Well, nobody said that he was, uh, you know, the the end all be all when it comes to not rushing to judgment. But everybody, is he should to be. Judgment. He's president of the fucking United States, Phil. Thank God. But you know, Bill, how, every, how, everybody. How, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? He's rushing. Uh, everybody's rushing to judgment. You, did you hear the? Did you hear the uh, diatribe that was read this afternoon by the police? They went. By, they went down it, and they said at twelve o two, he called. They have all of his phone records, so they know who we called. They know what happened. His plane was delayed, so that means he had a call to delay the attack. They said the attack was going to happen at two in the morning, okay. and they went through this thing like a like a travel log of exactly right. what happened. And you know, one other thing that the police said, and you know, of course, they found that out after everybody said, "Oh, how terrible the guy was!" Uh, you know, stuff was thrown on him, and it was an, a, a, an attack. But uh, what the police said that struck me uh, a little funny is they said. Uh, you know, the city of Chicago has so much crime, uh, and we devoted these resources uh, to uh, to this issue. Yeah. But uh, they said if we were if if we were to if the media they they said was to spend the same amount of time on the other stuff that's going on in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that would be more important. Uh, but uh, they they spent you know tons of time media time on Smollett. Uh, so you know why? Why? Well, it's, it has to do with news values, and this one uh, falls under the category of social deviance mm. and statistical deviance, by the way, as well. So uh, all of it has to do. There, there's a bunch of news values. Proximity. Um, Proximity is very and, important. Uh, yeah. 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 
Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg said that a squirrel dying outside your window can be more important than you know 100 Africans dying across the uh, some, yeah, somewhere across, across the, the world. world. Yeah, because it uh, it has proximity. But the thing is that uh, 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 it, 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 people were have been yelling and screaming about. Uh, you know, and I'm the first one to yell and scream. Let's let's be honest. Uh, I was on this show a week ago when this thing first hit and said, I don't know if I believe it. Okay. Me too. Uh, but I, you know, we were a little, I was a little reticent to go all the way with that because, you know, I mean, I, I was hoping, well, I was hoping that it really was true, but I wasn't hoping it was true because it's terrible. It was a terrible incident. But a lot of people came to his defense, and they did. They did tweets saying, "Oh, poor J Jussie," and uh, I think uh, our, our. And I think that was a reasonable. No, wait a minute. Thing Let me finish, on... Phil. Let me finish. Yeah. Our uh, our Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, put, did a tweet on it, and a lot of people are saying, "See now, those people they rushed to judgment on this thing, you know." They, and the yeah. fact is, they didn't rush to judgment. What they did is they heard a story, and the story affected them. They didn't. They felt yeah. bad by what they heard. Okay, so they really weren't wrong in responding to that. They were simply responding to the story as they knew it at the moment. Um, so you can't really hold it against them now because they they have a certain amount of sensitivity. Uh, but a lot of people were afraid to say, "Hey, I think this thing's big, fat, fucking phony," because it didn't seem real to me from the big, from the get go. It just seemed. It smelled. Didn't pass the smell test over here. Well, the thing you that know. was throwing me off is that he wouldn't pass over his phone. <clears throat> that yeah. well, I, I, I didn't that and the noose around him. his neck, you know, yeah. and and the, the fact other thing they said was how how the hell you're in you're in a freezing if you've never been in Chicago yeah. in the middle of in late January, mm -hmm. it's cold. That he's he's bundled up like nobody's business, and they could figure out that it was this guy, right? They knew that they. I mean, come on, it's just a little bit contrived. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but this but, helps Trump. But uh, you know, I mean, I I feel sad that I have to say I told you so. On the other hand, I, I told you so, and so did Kevin. Uh, you know, and uh, I. But I, I can understand why the press went lightly on it because you don't want to look bad if it turns out that uh, he really did have this happen to him. So you have to have a simp You have to be sympathetic towards the story as you be were told it was at the moment. Yes, Rob? I'm a little bit surprised by Phil's reaction to this, being that you were uh, part of law enforcement at one time. The idea that this guy created all this and wasted all those resources, police resources, that you're not more, um, that, that that's not more, out more of an outrage to you than to it's me, a, for example. It's a crime. You know, I, I, I'm not taking it personally. Uh, you know, uh, the the whole idea is the guy the guy made a false report. It's a crime. They investigated it. They found the crime. It's no different than investigating uh, Cohen for his uh, crime. I think what they did is by a process of elimination, uh, they managed to finally say, "Hey, nothing happened here." But they had to make sure of that. Because yeah. they didn't want to be the bad guys either if it turned out this guy really was attacked, you know? Yeah. So the police had to go be very sensitive to that situation as yeah, well. They did their job. And, and they did uh, their job. Once they found out the truth, you know. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, even as a cop, you know, what, what am I going to do? Get upset when somebody knocks over a 7-Eleven? It happens, you know. It's the it's what they do, and the and the cops. Do their yeah, job, but but you you, you should be pissed off if 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 you're being you're going around trying to chase a story that's a fake one, while you should be going around and probably solving some other crime somewhere because God knows there are enough of them in Chicago. Well, it it yeah, was a crime, and fake. they did solve it. You know, uh, it, you, as a as a cop, you have to be empathetic and not sympathetic. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you become part of the problem. So Fox. When it first happened, said we stand by J Jesse Smollett completely, and then now they're very, very quiet. They're not saying yeah. really much of anything. How I many days? How many doing. days do you think it's going to be before they uh, say, "Well, we're not hiring him back for next year"? Because the last episode is being shot right now. They they said that they took him out of episodes. Yeah, no, no, they already did. Yeah. They didn't well, take they him cut, out. They, they didn't take him out of episodes. Here's what they did: they cut yeah. down his appearance in those episodes. They edited him out of some of the earlier episodes, which have yet to be seen. 
And then uh, the last episode, he had something like nine scenes, and they cut it down to four. But does he still get the sixty-five k an episode? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. He's yeah. going to need it for attorneys. So. But, is he, it, but yeah. the question is, do you think he's going to be back next year? Do you think Fox is going to put up with that? No, probably not. You know, the only value in having him on the show is because everybody wants to see him now That's on right. the show. So, you know, I wonder what kind of talk is going on at Fox. Well, we could let him, we could, he could stay on. We, could, we can let him stay on by saying, hey, until he's found guilty in a court of law, we can keep him on. We don't want to be judges on this. And then, yeah. they, then the looky-loo factor will come into play, and it'll help the ratings of what is a failing uh, sit, uh, television show. So Yeah. And this helps Fox News. How's the hell oh, Fox it's not News? Fox News, it's Fox Entertainment or something. Like yeah. That. yeah, yeah, which isn't but even owned by isn't even owned by Murdoch anymore. It's, uh, who it's owns it now? D Disney. Disney. Yeah. Well, Disney doesn't go for this shit. You know, I mean. They... Well, Disney hasn't taken it over yet. So, but the minute they do, I'm sure he's out the door. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, we had the Oscars this weekend. Coming up, really? Yeah. Oh boy, oh, it's coming up. Yeah. All right. Are you thrilled by that? No, I didn't. I didn't know, and I didn't care. Yeah. Hey, you didn't care. Yeah. Uh, anybody? The, the, any... the biggest film is huh? one that made zero dollars at the box office. Well, because it was on cable. It was on uh, uh, on oh, Netflix. Netflix. Or Netflix. Yeah. What's and, interesting? And by the way, by the they... way, you're wrong. It did make money in the theaters because it was playing in theaters. Uh, but it was playing in theaters at the same time it was on Netflix. Because the reason Netflix put it in theaters was that's the only way you could get nominated for an Academy Award. You can't get nominated for an Academy Award by putting it on Netflix. You know why oh. these not, these shows that didn't have a lot of oomph behind them are uh, getting uh, nominated and, and possibly winning all the awards? It's because Weinstein is no longer promoting uh, the deals when when Weinstein was uh, promoting all of those movies, his movies got the awards because he put so much into uh, getting people to vote for him. I well, guess. yeah, no, but he knew how to he knew how to campaign yeah, how to campaign for for an right. Oscar. But the point is he that uh, that uh, no uh, Netflix had to put that in theaters. Uh, uh, marginally, just so, in other words, in order to be nominated yeah, like for an Academy Dora. Award, your th film has to open up in a real movie theater at least one day yeah, in the previous year, huh? Spielberg I said that's going to totally change. Against that, but he, you know, yeah, fuddy duddy. But I think it's amazing that a film that was created by Netflix, a you know, a company that only a few years ago was mailing out DVDs. You know, is uh, is suddenly going to probably have one of the most honored films of the year. Didn't somebody uh, uh, in in entertainment say that uh, there the industry is dead and Netflix beat us? Who was that? Uh, Spielberg. Was it Spielberg? No, I don't think it was Spielberg. It was. Um, uh, well, I don't. You know, I got to say something here. I think the film. I don't know if you've seen Roma or not, but I love the film. I think it's a very good film. But I it's had a hard time watching. But, but it's a Roma? very it's because it, Phil because it's not your kind of picture. But it is no, a it is a, a, a made picking up shit. Well, no, it, it's shit. it's more than that. It's a it's it's a slow. Uh, yeah, it was slow. It's a slow remembrance of things past for the filmmaker. And it it is it's not meant to be a a picture with a plot. If you ask me what the plot of that film is, I can't really tell you. And Somebody that's what's that's women. That's what's so interesting about it. It defies yeah. description, and it is a very special kind of film, and it's a very personal film on the part of Alfonso Cuarón. And I, quite frankly, after I got finished watching it, I went, "Yeah, okay, I get it. I like it. You know, what I like the way it image? looked. I like the way it felt. And I, and, and what did it have to say? It didn't have to say much about anything except what, what life was like when he was growing up. It would have been easier if they got a smaller car for that garage. You know? Could be. Uh, could be. Yeah. yeah. But What's the movie? Uh, uh, Roma. 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 Uh, I've heard of it. Yeah. Y yeah, I'm missing much. Well, I, yeah, I, I, you are missing Oscar. much, Kevin. I think you might enjoy it. Don't listen, well, that's the Don't listen about... to Phil. He's the, he's the Michael weekend Snyder weekend. of the citizen panel. Uh, yeah, what were you going to say, Rob? 
that's the thing about movie, the the Oscars. They're not they're not a popularity contest. So you know, it used to be. Yeah, it used to be, but it is no longer a popularity contest. Well, you know, you know what's interesting about films now appearing on Netflix, and you wonder why a lot of these people are now putting all their films on Netflix. <clears throat> if Roma had opened up in a movie in movie, movie theaters exclusively, uh, probably to the date, it probably might have been seen by. 10, 20,000 people. But now, with Netflix, this thing has probably been seen by 50 million people. More people have seen this movie than we ever would have seen it in a movie theater. Yeah. So um, it's, a, it, it, and it, it's a good new place. I mean, Alfonso Caron, if he had gone to 20th Century Fox and pitched this movie, never would have gotten made. Would have never gotten made by most most major motion picture companies because they would not see the commercial value in the picture. Okay, it took a Netflix to allow this film to be made, and whether you liked it or didn't like it, Phil, the fact that it got to be made at all is because the Netflix exists. Did Netflix actually uh, aid in the making of it, or did they just get it once it was made? How they aid in call in, in an original? No, they went to a Netflix. And Netflix uh, paid for the making of the film. Oh. You know, maybe they had other partners in it, you know, but you know, it's a Netflix picture. Yes. Uh, but Alex. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is Spielberg is making the argument that if, if we allow this to continue, then this is going to, you know, movie theaters are going to go by the wayside. And... If you think about it, it's interesting that that aspect of the media, along with going to concerts, are sort of the two things that are, you know, human. They're social, and they're things that no, uh, see, I the dis internet can't I, take I disagree. away. A, a, I disagree with Spielberg because to begin with, the movie theater is gone already. What's it, what it's yep. been replaced by is the amusement park. Uh, the films that do best in theaters now are the tentpole pictures with uh, that uh, Marvel does and uh, the Disney pictures and so on that you want to go to a movie theater because you want the shared experience as kind of almost a thrill right. thrill ride. That's what we yeah. said. Yeah, and it, uh, but, and well, but what I'm I saying is him. that's not the fault of Netflix. That's the fault of the business itself, which yeah. ha has become uh, 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 more into the business of amusements. And the, things, the thing is that the smaller pictures now have a place. Independent pictures now have a place to be made. And that's Netflix, and that's Amazon, and that's uh, Hulu, you know. Yeah, but what, what uh, you know, what Bree was talking about is that you, when you have that social experience in a movie theater and you lose that uh, because it doesn't exist anymore, it goes by the, the way of the dodo bird or something. Well, I, I will uh, tell... It's, it's just, I'll, it just I'll, separates I'll, people I'll tell even Sp more. I'll tell Spielberg this. If he wanted to make Schindler's List today, he would have to go to Netflix to get somebody to pay for it. Okay? Plain and simple. You know. Uh, uh, and, and by the way, fuck Steven Spielberg. He's the guy that invented the amusement movie. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, his, his complaining about it is like an old man farting too much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I still uh, think the movie business is uh, is doomed. Oh, the, yeah. the, the theater business is doomed. Hey, listen, I have a 4K television set now in in almost every room of my house. What do I need to go to a movie theater for? You know how what that what is up on that screen? It's a 4K signal. It's a 4K video signal. I live two blocks away from a 16 screen movie theater. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I used to go to that movie theater on Sundays religiously. I'd get there at maybe 10 in the morning, I'd watch four films, I'd go from uh, thing to screen to screen, and uh, sometimes I didn't get out of there until 10 o'clock at night, uh, or even later. And now, with the 65-inch TV in the living room, mm -hmm. I, I don't go. Well, and the, the point is, the point is, right here at my home, I have a four-screen multiplex. Yeah. Okay, I have, and I, I could put as somebody in every room mm -hmm. watching different movies in 4K, the same quality you're getting in the movie theater, right. and uh, you know, yeah. I Rob have, was I saying, have 125 but inches. Yeah. I have a 20, 125 inch screen downstairs mm -hmm. with Gosh. with 
with a surround sound projector. This yeah. is a projector. My, uh, y- y- there's no difference in the experience. Is the, is the projector the cap- popcorn's cheaper? Is the yeah. is the uh, <laughs> is the projector capable of 3D? Because the only things that, it is. Yeah, it is capable of 3D. I don't have 3D because I, you know, I've never. You know, I don't have any titles, but uh, it is capable. Of it 3D. is capable of 3D. That because the only you know they're not making 3D TV sets anymore, but they are. All the projectors are. But they all the projectors, all the projectors are 3D. So I may have to get a projector eventually because I love 3D. You know. Where will well, you, you know put what they're doing in bedroom? San Jose now? They're having some kind of a down in San Jose. There's a some sort of experience going on now they get you go in and there's a 3d experience where they got uh have you heard about that phil no uh, i don't Bridge. i don't care for 3d movies no it's like uh it's like uh god i can't remember they just opened it up about a month ago yeah. at oak ridge and it's uh something to do with you get uh, six or eight people into the theater and you watch the movie and it it sprays shit on you, and it's almost like a, you know, it's almost like the ride, and you, 3D. We, we call it 4DX the, here. It's, no, it's, it's called 4DX. Experience. Yeah. It, is it, it a, probably costs is, you It sprays feet stuff feet on you. Is it a porn film? It's, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check it you out know, and find out what it is. I, but it's I don't like know. 4DX. It's supposed to take the movie, you know, take the movie to the next level or whatever. I don't it's know. A Silicon Valley thing. If, yeah. if what's happening with 3D movies is that. Uh, I tried Monovision, for instance, which uh, where you wear one contact in one eye and a long, a long distance in the, in the other eye and yeah. short. And, and I never, my brain was never able to really adapt to it, and it would give me headaches and I, I wasn't comfortable. I'm just wondering if 3D is also doing that to me, and that's why I don't enjoy a 3D No, 3D, movie. 3D, 3D uh, you, there used to be a great deal of eye strain with 3D. Yeah. Uh, in the early '50s films, but what they've done uh, lately is they they problem. they actually uh, adjust this so your eyes don't have to strain at all. It, in fact, mo- most of the 3D movies aren't 3D at all. They are converted into 3D, which yeah. pisses me off because I love real 3D movies. I uh, I collect all the old ones, uh, even the bad ones. Uh-huh. So I can watch them here. Yeah, if I go to the theater and they've got the same movie in two th- two theaters, and one of them is three D. Oh, the I'm, o- is, I'll, I'll I'm always I'm always going for the three D. Always yeah. going for the three D. Well, at least I won't have to sit next to you. Even though the three D is not really three D, it wasn't shot in three yeah. D. But if you ever go back to those old films, and you can, you know, I have some here like Kiss Me Kate and House of Wax and a film called Sangaree, and I have a bunch of old, really old ones. They were shot stereoscopically. They were shot with two cameras. They were shot, you know, in depth. Yeah. And uh, they're pretty good. You know, they, they really... There are still some cameras amazing. that are stereo... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Stereo well, they, yeah, the, the stereo realist camera. Do you still get the uh, movie passes for uh, uh, screeners? We used to take me to those screeners. Uh, uh, I, could, I, get, I get invites to them, but I don't go. Yeah. It's too much trouble. It's just too much trouble, you know. Uh, yeah. And and uh, plus the fact that you know I, I I just figure whatever's out today in three months is going to be available somehow, you know. Yeah. And, and so why should I? Um, you know. So, and now we we actually see Dubai or what passes for Dubai, which is. Uh, um, uh, Breeze uh, apartment. Breeze laundry. <laughs> Breeze laundry, laundry room. room. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah my, my battery was running low, so I had to come here and charge it. But I'm on a different Wi-Fi now, so I don't know if it'll. You know, Bree, uh, uh, Alex's friend Walter Sabo does his show from a laundry room, so you're probably in uh, good company. Yeah. <laughs> so let me let me ask you, uh, and I, I would ask Josh Wheeler this because he's our our legal expert uh uh stone today uh, roger stone was mm-hmm. told by the judge to shut the fuck up uh that he he can't talk about the case or anything like that i think what the he, gag order well he can he can raise funds for it and and make statements in those funds you know that he needs the help and blah 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 but that otherwise he can't talk about it uh 
isn't shouldn't that be his decision to make rather than a judge's? And if he's talking uh, about it while he's raising funds, isn't that the same? Well, as no, no. That, we're, 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 we're talking about it. He's still allowed to do it for that purpose, but uh, yeah. it, to talk about it in that context, but not to discuss the merits of the case otherwise. Uh, but my question is, I mean, he's the guy who's going to be on trial. And if he says things which are going to prejudice a jury against him or whatever— uh, doesn't he have the right to do that if he wants to? Well, I mean, obviously not. I mean, gag orders have been in place for, you know, quite some time. I mean, constitutional rights are not always limitless. You know, I mean, every law school in America has that conversation, you know, right out of the gate. I mean, I, I think the point is that, you know, he, in high price profile cases like that i mean if he tries to raise money through like you know sending out a letter or something like that it's more yeah. of a target targeted what, audience wait a minute. But, what are you what are you doing you're you're kind of throwing us off here Bree. what what are you putting that up for huh you're muted also yeah you're muted also so we can't hear you anyway but, let's get back yeah, to josh first khalifa and it's 8 30 in the morning here. okay yeah, but you, did you see what the date is to here it's it's the 21st on your phone, it's the 22nd. Yeah, so your yes. phone's wrong. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, get, let's get back to this, Josh. What I'm saying is, is that, yes, I understand why a judge would say, do not discuss the case in public. I, that part I understand. Uh, I don't think she was as mad about that as she was about the fact that he'd had a picture of her next to a target and had his photograph uh, taken there, you know. Uh, and yeah. Now, that, you say that that was a target. It looked to me like it was a demonic symbol and, uh, you, you know, well, so, well, wait, something uh, Anton LaVey yeah, would have. Yeah, Bree? Bree? How about, uh, how about the press reporting where AOC lives right at the time when there was a guy who found with multiple weapons and she was on the target list? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the Coast Guard uh, yeah. officer who... Yeah. You know, the I, funny thing is, they said that this guy amassed a great amount of weapons and, and, and ammo. I have a thousand rounds of ammo, and I have almost just about 15 guns. So I, I'm, you know, I'm wondering, does that make me a terrorist? Next. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I ask just a simple, silly little question? What do you need with 15 fucking guns? You just accumulate them over a 30 year period, 40 years period. You know, is, I mean, you accumulate them. This is not I lint just, that winds up in your crack of your ass. You know, you don't just collect them. What's yeah, well, oh, that's I, him? Oh, that's El Chapo. Oh, that's El yeah, Chapo. He needs I, 15 guns. That's the guy that needs 15 guns. When I was guns. on the force, I had two of everything because if you got into a shooting yeah uh you wanted uh one to replace that and you wanted the same kind of operating okay so, so i okay so you need two of them or maybe even need right. three of them in case two of them break all right but, but 15 there's phil different, there's different amounts of concealability i have guns oh, that God. are a couple of inches i have ones for my ankle i yeah. have ones for the hip uh you know i have uh, several different kinds, and and when I was on duty, I carried three guns, uh, you know, uh, and actually four with my shotgun. So uh, you know, you there's it's there was a mission for it. Now I'll never sell them. Yeah, well, we're getting off so, the topic of what we were talking about, uh, Mr. Yeah. Meyer. Yes. Oh, knock Mr. knock. Meyer. <laughs> Open the door, please. <laughs> yeah. You just do it the way we do. Yeah. Knock and announce, and then knock the door down. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know I, um, you know I've just the, the, my only problem, Josh, is that at, at what point is are they? Does he have the freedom to speak, and not the freedom to speak? Now, if I think what she doesn't want is for the case to be prejudiced, so they can seat a jury. All right, so that if you're discussing it in the press, you have a harder time seating a jury. But then again, she's not saying to MSNBC, who is reporting Roger Stone as the most evil human being on the face of the planet, that they should stop because that would influence a jury. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it's a fine line. I mean, it's difficult 
to stop the press as a whole, but it's not very difficult to stop an individual, I suppose. You know, I mean, an individual or, you know, a very small organization such as an individual and his, you know, two, three lawyers and the prosecution. So, you know, what we're talking, you know, six, eight, ten people or whatever who would be worthy enough for the press to interview. Uh, you know, you can stop them pretty easily, but you can't stop the press as a whole. But in a way, you can slow the press down with that because you take away some of the principal people that they may be able to have on to kind of, from both sides, you know, to kind of shoot their mouth off about it or whatever. I mean, I think all that are, you know, the judge is really trying to do is just prohibit some kind of quasi, you know, jury tampering, which, you know, is what you were saying is, right. you know, prejudice a jury pool, but... I mean, these things have been done before. But, but don't. And, but but doesn't the press do that in advance? I mean, Fox does it and probably saying nice things about Roger Stone, and MSNBC is playing him out to be the villain. Uh, it, it, isn't that the kind of thing the judge should yell out about too? But then again, they would be yelling, you know, you're trying to hamper the press. So where's right. you know, where does he get? It, does he have to be accused of something and then remain absolutely silent in the absence of his not making a comment seem even more guilty? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if he has to. And by the way, I'm no great fan of Roger Stone, although I think right. he's a hoot. But sure. uh, uh, I'm, I think I'm a, he was winning hearts and minds when he was uh, doing what he was doing. I don't think and he was winning that, any and hearts and minds. Probably I don't think he was winning any. He wasn't winning any hearts and minds. Well, Roger Stone winning know. hearts and minds? Are you kidding yeah. me? Well, oh, he, people kept saying, "Hey, you know, you, you had SWAT teams, you had all of this stuff at six o'clock in the morning. You've been investigating the guy for two years. Uh, you know, here uh, you you had uh, scuba." The, the reason the SWAT team went out, the reason they were out like that and made it a surprise, was yeah. they felt if they told him they were coming, he might destroy evidence. If he hadn't destroyed it by now, it ain't getting destroyed. You, you can't. You don't know that exactly. You yeah. remember and, he was saying that he had the SWAT teams. They scared his dog. They scared his wife. But they were very nice. They were very courteous. All in the same fucking sentence. Yeah. Just like Trump. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, I, 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 I let me put it this way. I, I, I find Roger Stone fascinating. Okay, as opposed to Donald Trump, who I just find to be a turd. And he's uh, one. I, I he's going to get off. Be about the same level, and that's why he's, I was I was surprised the judge didn't stick a stick he, right yeah. up his ass and shut him up today. Charlie. Yeah, I watched that movie. Get me. Um, get Roger, get Roger Stone, Stone. Yeah. And I did not find him fascinating at all. In, fo in fact, I found I found him atrocious. He he's is an a horrible arrogant. Human well, being. no. Here's here's what I found fascinating about him. He has absolutely no respect for what would be considered nice <laughs> he just is or so truth. unapologetically respect. bad what you keep holding these things up and they don't make sense to what we're talking about oh, you want yeah, to say because something? i don't know i that all the political stuff that you talk about i get bored of it after a while because i believe trump will just pardon this person and the the fact is that they've done such a good job cloudying and muddying everything i can't keep track i really can't keep track of what's real and what is not and then the jesse smollett case and all this it's just all garbage well, you, know, you know part i don't of, think it has any it, relevance part of it part of your and and you have the, the right to that opinion because you're not exactly here you know what i'm saying yeah. it doesn't uh, re, if you don't want it to affect you it doesn't have to affect you if we don't want it to affect us well it's going to affect us anyway no no i don't okay. agree with that even but though that's, that's he's not exactly here, what they're trying to do even though he, even though he's not here he gets the same tv shows over the internet that that we do if he goes you know, the, to the internet but he, but in general he's still I, I whenever i go to europe for instance yeah. I hear, you know, when I was living, it was staying in Spain for a while. I heard everything that was going on back home, but it was back home. And I got all the How information in those days. That? I was getting a, a day later. So it had already happened, you know. Yeah, well, how many years ago was no, that? What I, I, you know, all I'm saying it, is, is that that if I were living in Europe right now, yes, I would care what was going on over here, but not in the same way that I'm caring about it being here. And I think I think Bree would agree with me on that one. Right, Bree? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's probably but, it's probably part but then, of the reason for your being bored by it because it 
it, it, there's, you're so removed from it that you can't do anything about it. You know? Well, and here's the other thing. Uh, I, I've already come to my conclusion about it. I believe that, and here it is in a nutshell. Yeah. I mean, this whole thing. First of all, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Washington is just screwed up. It's like you can't do anything there without 25 people saying this is wrong, that's wrong, we got to do this, we got to have an investigator, we got to spend more money. We gotta... the... Trump had a business and he was a celebrity. He went around and had, he had dealings with a lot of people yeah. and his company still runs and he his kids run it. Mm -hmm. Did he have interactions with Russia? Sure. During his business days, I'm sure he tried to get money. They, they've said as much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So did, did he sit down in a room with, uh, you know, Russian people and say, here's exactly what how we're going to run the U.S. for the next four years? No, it didn't go like that. You know, but yet we just go over and over again and oh did he do this stop with it we're living back in the days we're living back in the days where everybody was saying hey what about the emollients what what about uh uh you know uh trump and uh and maybe we can is, uh, overthrow him if we don't certify him in the electoral college you know here's uh, what we is, okay so what wait, wait, wait. okay so what are this you holding up the story yeah so, so what happens is we miss stories that actually mean something or stories that are revolutionary. This this story says that the Chinese twins that had their genes altered says that they've enhanced their ability to learn and form memories uh, because they have enhanced cognition and memory as a result of the gene editing. That's huge. That's, that's the that's, gene editing is a I mean, system is a system called CRISPR, right? Yeah. Yeah. I had well, my genes altered, that. and they just You're let them out of me. Wait, 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 Josh, Josh. No, I'm just saying, you, you're going to have to forgive me here because I'm going to be a dick, but you're sitting there saying, you know, that Trump didn't sit, did, did he sit in a room and tell the Russians this is how we're going to run the United States for the next four years? No, it didn't go that way, but I'm sorry. First of all, you don't know that. That's Second right. of all, a lot of people do want to know that. Third, a lot of people on this network and in this country want to know that and want to talk about that. And second, if you think that for 15 seconds I'm going to care more or spend more time of my day caring about or talking about two fucking Chinese babies who had their brains altered more than I am the operations and daily actions of my government, then I'm, you're sadly mistaken. And you can call and talk about anything you want, that's fine, but you interject it in the middle of a fucking conversation and then act like we're supposed to... I mean, I, I just I don't know where to go with that. But I think the fine. Democrats had their brains altered in 2016. You know, don't don't laugh at him, Rob. It only encourages him. <laughs> I, I, I but I, I I I agree with what you're saying. You know, I understand that that story has relevance, but in we have a we have a we, crisis going on in this country. Beings. But we have we're a crisis going on. Beings. <clears throat> yeah, but, but you know, it's it, 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 right it, now. it was said. So we the don't wall. know if we don't know if our president is an agent of a foreign government. That you, you are going to hold on, Phil, McCabe, Phil, Phil. He's making liar? Phil. Don't go apoplectic. He's just making a statement. It, well, you know, this goes back to something, Bree, that somebody said earlier about that if a squirrel dies outside your window. That's more important to you than some kid who's dying in the Mideast somewhere because it has proximity. And proximity is, is, is very important to, to the news that we want at that moment. The kind of things we're talking about here, they, could care, they couldn't care less about in China. Okay? Right? You see, but that, but you they, see, that's maybe that Christmas opinion. story is big in China. You know, so... Um. You know, the the thing is that all politicians mm -hmm. are influenced by, you know, a lot of different things. Okay, here's a good question. Why did Kamala Harris get a t first town hall for a Democratic candidate? Why did she get that? Why did they give that to her? Because they yelled I mean, out the window were... and she was the first person to yell back, probably. Take a Believe look at right. Kamala Harris's campaign contributions for the last 10 years. I wonder, hmm, Warner Media, gee, do they own CNN? Yes. She got that because of that. 
They're yeah, one of her main. Yeah, but the same. But, 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 but wait a minute. The people in the last no, ten years that not. owned the people in the last ten years that owned uh, uh, CNN were not the people that own it right now. Okay. Yeah, but what do you mean? Uh, so they're they not the same people who own it right money? now. Who bought it, uh, Rob? Was it? <laughs> AT&T. AT&T bought it. Yeah. yeah. It, they've also contributed. It's like... Um, uh, did they contribute you know, to Kamal they, Harris? I, I have no idea that they did. Yes. And, and and here's the difference. We used to have, you would know this, in 1948... Well, wait a minute. Let me ask passed. you this question. How many other people did they also contribute to? Because a lot of times these companies contribute to everybody yeah. so that they so that they get Not their... Not to Elizabeth Warren. Well, would you? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, you know, you know there is such surprise. a thing as called as throwing good the money Indian after bad. Are going to contribute, huh? Uh, uh, the Indian casinos, if they're going to contribute to Elizabeth Warren, you well, know, they listen. They well, hate they Phil. They hate her more than you do. Yeah, well, okay. they can get one of their theirs in the in the White House. Didn't know? CNN get Warren a, 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 a whatever you call it a two, just like Harris? <laughs> All right, so I I do apologize. You're right. I did change it. I you have to understand. I'm just waking up here, so yeah. like then I turn on my stuff and I get these. I get this news and information, and uh, I, my brain just starts working. And I don't know when, when you talk about Roger Stone. It's just uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. You're right. No, editing but, human beings. No, and you know something. Our there's no, there, there's no right. Not yeah, that but there's no, there's no right or wrong right in you in the states. And there's no right it's or fine. wrong in this. I mean, you're sitting in Dubai, and so what we're seeing here is really what happens in the world and your perception of what is important depending upon where you are. Okay, so you have nothing to feel bad about, but on the other hand, uh, you have. Uh, six other people, myself included, who are ensconced in this because it's happening to us day by day, and our yeah. personal lives are going to be affected by it. I mean, for instance, you're paid. Well, you're paid by who? Who? Who is your employer? Kamala Harris. No. Who? Who, <laughs> who is? Who is your employer? Is it? I'm not in particular, but is it a foreign entity outside the United States? Who writes yeah. your check? Okay. Yes. So the and you pay taxes to what? To buy? I don't pay taxes. Why? We we don't have taxes here. Oh. Taxes is over. Excuse Crazy me, folks. Idea. I'm going to move to Dubai tomorrow yeah. and completely divorce myself from <laughs> the rest of the world. Are you affected at all uh, because you're an American? Uh, do you have to pay anything there, or uh, you know, do you have to pay Social Security or or anything like that? Uh, um, like you're an independent it's, contractor. It's, it's complicated. I, I still the way it works is if you're if you're an American, you live abroad. You we are there are only two countries in the world that still tax their citizens if they live abroad. Guess yeah. which two countries? The yeah, U.S. The U.S. Yeah. and Eritrea. Eritrea. Never heard of Eritrea. It. It's, it's an African country. Yeah. They're the only two in the world. So I still am obligated to pay U.S. taxes. The good thing is I don't make enough money because I'm a teacher, I don't make enough money to have to pay those taxes. You have to make over a hundred thousand dollars in oh, order you, to pay. Do taxes. you file? Do you have to file a tax? Yes, return? I do have to oh. file. But but you yeah. but but under a hundred thousand dollars you're not required to pay American taxes. That's so right. and you're not taxed by Dubai. Dubai has no personal income tax? No personal income tax. Nope. That's it's what an you get. With, idea. Oh it's a wonderful idea yeah. because they're so fucking rich that country they don't need your money. Um, yeah, well, it, that's complicated as well. The the state, the emirate where I live in, is not as wealthy as others. Yeah. But um, yeah, they they just have different ways of funding things. So, for example, um, the it, wow, it's really hard to explain, and I don't know that you guys want to know. But it's, I mean, it's when I come back to the states and I see that you know, peop, my families are they pay taxes, but the roads are crumbling next to them. Then I come here, you know, and we have perfect roads. And it's just a, it's a way that you fund it and, and the way and who you ask to fund it and how you fund it. So, for example, around here, the school is responsible for the roads immediately around its environment. So if there's litter bugs or if there's uh, some infrastructure that goes, they will take care of that. So it's kind of like a neighborhood uh, business 
uh, and government cooperation. So that's not up for the individuals to pay taxes for that because we'll buy the things from businesses and spend our money that way. So the businesses want to keep the roads clear and nice so that people will come to their business. So that's you like know. McDonald's picking up around their trash around the neighborhood. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a public like open. Domino's it, filling potholes? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I, all I know is I, I have a screensaver on Apple TV of several shots of Dubai. And it's an amazing city. It is just an amazing city. And, is it uh, a city or a country? It's a country, it, I think. It's, it's a city. It's a city? What, what is the yeah. Emirates, though? The Emirates is the country? That's right. And what is it called? Dubai? United Arab Emirates. Oh, UAE. oh, okay. So you're part of the UAE, but you're that's du right. You're the Dubai is one of the Emirates. Okay, and it's the yeah. city. The whole city is Dubai. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and, the, and you the city and the state. It's and kind also, of like, uh, also, didn't it's you build like Washington D.C.? Didn't you build those sense. islands also in order to, for people to live on those islands? The ones uh, that, those, yeah, those haven't been going so well. They really? have uh, the map do of they the have, world. Do they have a military uh, in the UAE? Or, uh, you know, do they do they have a, a budget for military? Are they spending anything on military? Oh, yeah. Um, the UAE is one of the largest buyers, purchasers of U.S. Uh, military goods. Mm. Probably yeah. after Saudi Arabia, it's probably the second highest. And most uh, of the income comes from what? Oil? Oil. Um, in our emirate, it comes from uh, tourism uh is is and uh, tourism and uh transportation and um cargo like we so dubai is different abu dhabi makes money from oil mm -hmm. uh, dubai makes money from financial uh you like know, switzerland yeah. yeah and and singapore and dubai is very much like singapore how hot does it get there um, in the summer, we can get up to like, I think 130 degrees Fahrenheit. How do you go out in that? Uh, it's a dry heat. So now, I mean, I've heard that, but it's still 130 degrees. We get that in, in yeah. Arizona. Yeah. 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 It, I mean, you just plan your, it's like when I lived in Singapore too, you get hot and sticky. You just plan your, the way that you go about your life you just plan things but i see and what here's i the thing that, what i loved about san francisco i used to refer to it as the world's only air-conditioned city you know it, it there was certain singapore, it, it, singapore is like that yeah oh singapore no singapore oh singapore singapore no singapore it's is, a, yeah singapore is like an air-conditioned city you never have to i when i was there i walked all around the city and never really you're never really outside. No, no, no. But this oh. is the outside. It's air conditioned. I mean, it's yeah, San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco always has a certain cool. It's got an average in. temperature of like sixty five. Even degrees. if you have a ninety degree day, nighttime is fifty. You know, uh, so anyway, it's rare to have a ninety degree day. Boy, but I just I, I um, that kind of heat would drive me crazy. In my I love um, it. <laughs> oh, really? You like it? I yeah. like the heat too. Yeah. I like the tropics. Yeah. You know, do you ever, um, when you're at home, you open up, you're baking something, and you open up the oven, and you get that blast. Yeah. yeah. You know that that blast. That's what it's like in the summer here when you go outside. Oh. It's like you feel that blast, and then you're in it. But can you go from one then, place to another and pretty much be air conditioned all the way? I mean, I, I, I'm sure you get in a car and it's air conditioned, but then you yeah. go into a garage. Is the garage air conditioned? Some are, oh. some are, yeah. yeah. It just depends. And um, and the other thing is that uh, the air conditioning is so cold some days that I literally feel like a popsicle. So when I go outside in the you know 130, I actually am like ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha, you know I'm I'm de I'm thawing out. And it takes about 10 minutes to thaw out. Well, by 10 minutes I can be at the metro or I can be at the tram or yeah. I can be at the store. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. You know, I lived in Miami when I was going to college, and uh, my glasses would fog. You get you get out of the car; it's air conditioned in the car. You have to walk 
uh, from the parking lot to wherever you're going that's air conditioned. Well, but my glasses would fog. Yeah, well, I when I lived that in doesn't Houston, happen here. It, no, you know, when I lived in Houston, Texas, that city is so humid most of the year that yeah. I I used to joke about the fact that I was never able to keep a crease in my pants. You know, because I mean, it was just you you could almost swim in it, right, Charles? You know the Houston yeah, yeah, humidity. Yeah, I lived the year in Houston. Yeah. yeah. It, you, you like swim in the humidity. And that was the first time I ever had an air conditioner in a car because you didn't have a car without an air conditioner in, in mm -hmm. that city. And they were the kind that they just put in under the under the dashboard. Dashboard. Yeah. I, I thought uh, you used to have cars with cranks in, in the front. Th you know? That was before I had the car with air conditioning. <laughs> <Phil>. <laughs> hey, uh, Rob and I uh, uh, have been talking, and uh, you know he was telling me, that he had uh, itchy ears, and I sent him what I sent you. Yeah, and you don't you don't use it the ear gene. And, I haven't Rob, I haven't used it yet. I still have it here. I haven't had a reason. Rob, to use you it. got a testimonial for the ear gene? I'm telling you, I I am able to wear my hearing aids again. I had I stopped. I have six thousand dollars worth of hearing aids that sat for two years. I didn't because, know you wear hearing aids. Oh yeah, I wear. I from all I my didn't years. Know that Rob. From my years in television, from getting blasted, from all my years uh, working mm -hmm. in nightclubs and radio with headphones too loud, I wear hearing aids, and I had to stop wearing them because I'm wearing them right now. It's funny. I even forgot I have them in. This stuff, I used it by the third day. I put in my I, – I, I, there's no more itch. I could. I used to go crazy. I'd be driving, and I'd be pulling it in and going like this, and dr it would be driving me crazy. Yeah, Tell Alex, you, stuff Alex was doing that too. I sent him some of the same shit, uh, but he leaves it on his desk. He it's somewhere, it's it. somewhere here. I don't know. I bought, I, I bought it. I actually bought another bottle because God forbid I can't find it. I love it that much. <laughs> and now a really, word from here, Rob. Team. You're gonna be like Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, I don't. I, it's not the. Uh, <laughs> you remember I, when I, Peter? I you remember when Peter? Drugs. Remember when the, Peter Townsend of the Who lost his hearing? And they were thinking of changing the name of the group from the who to the what? Uh, oh, uh, that guy York from the Monkees died today, right? Peter yeah, Tork. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Tork. Peter Tork, yeah. Yeah, he was only 77 Seven. years old or something. Seven. Yeah. A youngster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had like cancer of the tongue or something, didn't he? Yeah, well, something bizarre. Wow. Oh, I don't wow. know. That's sort of like is he, uh, is human he the papillomavirus one? kind of thing. Is, is he the one whose mother invented Whiteout? Yes. No. No. Yes. That's Michael Nesmith. Mother oh, invented right Whiteout. He is the he is the heir to the Whiteout fortune, which nobody uses anymore. But when they were using it, she made, made a blood. fortune. She made yeah. a fortune. That's called Blanco. Yeah. Hey, listen. Blanco. We've uh, kind of run out of time here. The theme is they playing, uh, and <clears throat> and uh, it's been great having you here, Kevin. Nice having you here this evening, Rob. As always, a pleasure. Phil, good to have you back. You were a good boy tonight. Uh, Charles Wallace, always a good guy. Okay, Josh Wheeler. Uh, when we want a uh, a ruling on anything, we go to Josh. He's the he's the the uh, citizen panel judge. And of course, Bree, we always love hearing from you from uh, Dubai. Thank you for the forum, Alex. Huh? What? Thank you for creating the forum. Thank you for being part of it. And uh, why don't all of you wave a big goodbye to those people out there, and I'll wave back at you, okay? There we go. There goes the citizen panel for tonight. They're all finished. They're all going to get tucked in their beds. But wait a minute. they got to go over and do something. Yes, they should be there with the uh, the intersection with Jack Bishop, which is next over most of this same gabnet. Uh, tomorrow night, there's still no Damian Chaplin. He's still got equipment problems. Uh, hopefully, he's going to be up and running sometime soon. In the meantime, it's time for me to... This hat looks weird, doesn't it? It's from Hong Kong. Uh, it, 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 we'll be back again tomorrow night. 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight... Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.